Yesterday at OpenAI Dev Day, Sam Altman walked on the stage in San Francisco and said, your entire tech stack is deprecated. That's not a direct quote, I'm just paraphrasing, but we have about a half dozen newly released features that will change the way developers build AI-powered apps in the future. The biggest bet OpenAI is making is turning ChatGPT into an app platform, which means you no longer have to use old-fashioned websites or mobile apps like a boomer. The goal is to make ChatGPT like an operating system that you're completely locked into. Imagine this you want to play your favorite song on Spotify. Like I'm quitting Prozac to continue drinking by 19-year-old pop sensation Jimmy Brown. In the future, you no longer need to open the Spotify app and hit the play button. Instead, you can simply open the ChatGPT app and type out an awkward prompt to tell ChatGPT to push the button for you. Looks like the future of AI is going to skip the great robot war of 2029 prophesized in Terminator and go straight to the year of 2505 prophesized in Idiocracy. Now there are plenty of tards out there living really kick-ass lives. But developers who ride the ChatGPT app's wave early stand to make tons of money from the massive distribution opportunity of their 800 million weekly active users. But apps in ChatGPT isn't the most interesting announcement. You also need to know about AgentKit, Codex with GitHub Actions, new models for poor people, and some big updates to the API. It is October 7th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. First, let's talk more about apps and ChatGPT. Remember GPT plugins from a couple years ago? They died. Then they tried a slight variation, GPTs, but they're also pretty much dead. And now they're trying apps and ChatGPT because the third time's a charm, right? Right now it's only being trialed by big apps you probably recognize, and I think it could work really well for things like Zillow. Like this guy paid his realtor $50,000 for this million dollar home in San Francisco, when in reality ChatGPT could have done a better job faster. However, I'm also pretty bearish on apps and ChatGPT because in most cases, I'd rather just use an app's UI than rope in a chatbot to overcomplicate things. The next thing you should know about are updates to the OpenAI API. Both Sora 2 and GPT-5 Pro are now available in the API, which means you can start lighting money on fire trying to build your own AI-powered and shitification accelerator. Sora 2 costs 50 cents per one second of high-quality video, or about $1,800 to slop out a one-hour movie that nobody's going to watch. In addition, if you're implementing voice or image generation features, Features, there's now two smaller models that are far less expensive than the alternatives. They're pretty cool, but one of the greatest life hacks for developers is to stop wasting time on code reviews. OpenAI just released a GitHub action for Codex that will automatically review code quality every time you make a new PR on GitHub. And not just that, but you could also use it to scan for security flaws, write documentation, and a bunch of other stuff. The coolest thing announced yesterday, though, is AgentKit, a unified set of tools where developers can build, deploy, and optimize agents. Just a few days ago, I was talking about how awesome N8N was as a Zapier alternative, while well, now AgentKit drops as the N8N alternative for building AI apps. It gives you a flowchart-style canvas where you can implement the logic for your app without stitching together a bunch of code manually. On one hand, this tool has a lot of potential because it gives non-engineers the ability to build non-trivial apps. But on the other hand, no-code tools like this always have a complexity ceiling that eventually requires a real human programmer to come in and tear the entire thing down and build it properly with actual code. In any case, it's a legit new tool that you should have on your radar. Speaking of which, you also need to know what JetBrains is up to, the sponsor of today's video. They just launched a new AI coding agent called Juni that's tightly integrated with the JetBrains IDE and can understand the context of your entire code base. This allows it to fit seamlessly into your workflow so you can have it complete real-world jobs at your job, without the need to context switch between multiple tools. I've been using Juni on my own side project that has a bunch of complex geospatial data, and my honest opinion is that it's a little bit slower than other code gen tools I've tried, but it handles context and accuracy extremely well on a big project. That's huge if you're on a big team, and it integrates well with external platforms like GitHub, where you can assign multiple jobs to Juni at the same time and have it complete all of them asynchronously. Use the link below to try out Juni for yourself today. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.